Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the curve dialog in Photoshop. So if we take a look at this image here of this uh, wolf, uh, the first things that I notice about it is that it's uh, cool and there's a flatness to it, uh, meaning there's, there's a lack of contrast. I look around and I don't see any real pure black or pure white in the scene. Um, and because of the time of day that the image was taking, there's kind of a blue tone to it. We can use the curve dialog in a number of different ways. So let's first pull it up here. I'm going to come to my adjustment layers and choose the third icon to the right here, curves. Bring up the, the properties here for the curves. Now the thing to look at here when we're looking at the curve dialog, there's a number of different aspects to it. RGB is the color space that we're working in, and light is a combination of red, green, and blue. And it's based upon a percentages, really, of 0% uh, red, all the way up to 100% total in that particular channel of color red. And then you have the three different channels, red, green, and blue. And when you have 100% of all red, green, and blue, it creates pure white light. Now, the computer needs a way to give us certain numbers that tell us what that, that information is in relation to that total amount of light. And so it uses the 0 to 255 scale. It's 256 shades of tonality, because 0 is considered a digit at that point. Um, and 0 would represent 0 light. So if you had 0 in your red, green, and blue, you would have black, there would be no light. Whereas if all three said 255, it would be totally white, paper white, no detail, blown out, as, as we like to call it. Now right down the middle of the curve here, this line right here in the center is considered the 128, which would be the number that's right in the middle. So if you had 128, 128, 128, red, green, and blue, you would have middle gray. We can see this if we bring up our color picker over here, and I type in, here, 128, 128, 128. You'll see that it gives me here in this swatch where it says new, a middle gray. And if you can, you see here if I type in 0, 0, 0, gives me pure black. And if I type in 255, 255, 255, pure white, no detail. So this is the computer's way of interpreting uh, this information of, of light in these three different channels, red, green, and blue. And what we're looking at in this particular graph is we're looking at this in a scale where we have our histogram that indicates where this information is residing. Right now when we look at it we can see that the image uh, sits a little bit darker than mid-tone, uh, you know, overall. And if you look down here in this bottom left hand corner you'll see that this little arrow here is uh, rendered as black, indicating that that would be our shadow tones going all the way down to, to zero. And then here's our 128, the middle gray, and then up here this white arrow here, this white caret, indicating our highlights. So really you can look at it that this area here from the center line over to the right would be your highlights, and from this area here from the center line to the left would be all your shadow tones. Now for an image like this, we can apply what's called an S-curve, which essentially brings the highlights up a little bit and brings the shadows down a little bit. So we're, we would, in this scenario, we would look to place a point by clicking on this line there, and I just drag straight up, and I make the image brighter overall. And then I come over here, and I usually try to aim to get my, this little uh, anchor point to land not within the histogram, but kind of around the edge of the histogram, and I click, and you can use your mouse or your trackpad or what have you to drag that line down. You can also, once you click an anchor point, use the arrow keys and go in in increments. And at this point, I'm darkening that image down. I'm looking for more contrast. I want there to be a little bit more of a pure black in this image. And now this is what's called the S-curve. It's creating some snap or some contrast to this image. I can toggle the eyeball here for visibility on and off to see my before and after. Now there's still a certain amount of blue in this. So we have red, green, and blue light. And then in the pigment world, when it comes to inks, we have cyan, magenta, yellow, and then a black plate. Because if you have cyan, magenta, and yellow ink, and you mix them all together, you get more of a dark brown. So they need that black plate in order to render a pure black. Now, the thing to remember is that some of these work in opposites. If we remember our you know, basic primary colors and uh, the color wheel, 
You have red, green, and blue. The opposite of red is cyan. The opposite of green is magenta, and the opposite of blue is yellow. So when you're removing one, you're adding the other. When you're adding one, you're removing the other. So in this case, we look at an image that has too much blue. Uh, often I think that maybe it also has some cyan as well. So typically when I'm looking to warm an image up from a cool state like this, I would be looking to add red and remove some blue, which would be removing cyan and adding yellow. We can do this in this curve dialog by coming here to this RGB drop-down. When we click on it, it shows us the composite RGB, and it shows us red channel, green channel, and blue channel. So I would come to the red channel, and this is a neat feature of uh, the curves. There's this little, what I call the scrubby finger, kind of looks like those foam sports fingers you see at football games. Um, and you'll see this show up in Photoshop a number of times. It allows you to click and scrub numbers and, and opacity and things like that. But in this case, I can toggle it. And when I come into the scene, you'll see that there's a little circle that bounces around on my curve line, indicating where in this graphed information that particular tone resides. So if I was looking to say, well, you know, I'm seeing a lot of blue, let's say, kind of on the, you know, this area of the, this wolf's face, I would come in here and I would click once, and you can see it applies my anchor point for me directly from the image, which is nice. And as I toggle that red curve up, it adds a little bit of red, it's removing a little bit of cyan. I can come over here to the blue channel, and same thing, I can come and say, well, it's you know, pretty cool in here. I'm going to click with my scrubby finger, and it adds this little anchor point here, which I can then toggle my arrow key downward. And that then removes blue and adds yellow. So we're adding red and adding yellow in order to warm it up, removing cyan and removing blue. I can toggle the visibility eyeball here and see there's the before, a flat blue image, and here's the after. There's more snap, it's, it's warmer in tone, things like that. Now let's take a look at using curves on a landscape image. We can see here this image taken from Blue Mountain looking back at the South Hills in Missoula. And we can see that this image is flat, it's cool, um, it looks maybe slightly bright uh, for how I would want it. We can open up our curve adjustment layer and we can take a look at the histogram and we can see that there isn't a whole lot of shadow tone in this particular image. You know, a lot, lot of the histogram is off to the right hand side. So something like this, I could drop a point in my shadow area, darken the image down a ways. There we go. That's helping right off the bat. And I can bring my cursor over here to the highlight area and drop a point and brighten it up just a touch, just like so. Excellent. Again, we're looking, you know, I'd be looking with this image to remove some of the cyan and some of the blue out of the image. So I'm going to go to the red channel. Red and cyan are opposites. And I'm going to grab my scrubby finger here and I'm going to come into the scene where it generally feels like there's, you know, quite a bit of blue activity kind of up in here. I'm seeing it. And I'll go ahead and click there and I can add a little bit of red in there. And same thing here with the blue channel. I can bring my scrubby finger in there and click and remove some of the blue, adding yellow. Now to my eye, when I look at it, it there is also a little bit of a, a amount of green happening. And the opposite of green is magenta. So if I come to the green channel and I look around, down here in the grass is where I see it quite a bit, I can click and I can remove a little bit of that green, bringing a little bit more warmth overall to the image. So you can see here, before and after. Before and after. So the curve dialog gives us some control over uh, brightness, luminosity, as well as control over certain amounts of the color. The thing to remember is because you're working in red, green, and blue, and those three channels composited together are the light channels that make up the image. Anytime we make adjustments to any of these color channels, to a certain degree, we're adjusting the luminosity with it. Um, you know, if I take this green just as a point of example, and I bring it way up, you can see not only am I adding a, an insane amount of green, but it's also making things very bright. A, a large amount of bright green information coming in here, which is not ideal. It's not what I'm looking for. 
Um, so sometimes you can be, you know, pretty loosey-goosey and, and rough with your maneuvers here and curves, and, and other times maybe it's just a little bit that you're seeing, and you can use the arrow keys on the keypad in order to toggle that anchor point around. So color and tone corrections are not the only uses for the curve adjustment layer. We can also use the curve in a number of other ways in order to assess a file. I can see an image like this one, and sometimes I will use the curves in order to see if there's any dust on the sensor. Um, sometimes I can see a very apparent ones, like this one in the upper right hand corner, but there might be other ones that are there, you know, usually that indicates, ooh, if there's one there, there's probably a few more. Uh, and in certain scenarios, I may be, you know, looking to be very critical. I'm taking this particular image up very large in size, and I want to make sure that I get, you know, any of the anomalies that I'd like to remove. I want to take care of that. So we can use the curve dialog, come to the adjustment layers, get the curve up. We can use it, in, and this is a little bit of a different, kind of a wonkier way of using it, but uh, it's sort of a retoucher's trick in assessing files. We also are able to sometimes, after we've done a lot of clone stamping, we can do this same sort of thing, and it allows you to see, in some cases, where your clone stamping was happening. Um, it'll start showing if there was uh, not enough good blending in there, if you want to be very particular about that. You can use the same kind of technique to see where you did some cloning. But for this, what we're looking to do is we're really just looking to take and make a really crazy curve. So I'm, I'm going to come in here and I'm dropping a number of points. And what I'm looking to do here is to create this interesting, like, solarized sort of image. And you can see here, if I zoom in now on aspects of the sky, all of a sudden now, this information becomes apparent where I wasn't able to see that before. If I take this off, it's very hard for me to see that those are some sensor dust spots. But now they become very apparent by using this. And look, I can see these other little bits here, which look like at first I thought, well, maybe these are, you know, shooting stars or something. But no, it's, it's some sort of, um, you know, sensor dust that's there that needs to be cleaned off. You can see it here. And, uh, you know, things that you wouldn't necessarily have been able to see before in your image, utilizing a real funky sort of solarized curve like this allows you to see some of these other anomalies, so you know where you need to do some clone stamping to clean that up. Great, in this next image, I'm going to show you working with skin tone. You can see here in this wedding photo of this couple, that uh, again, it was you know shot towards dusk, and we've got the sky, the open sky, the blue sky that's doing most of the lighting in the scene, and because of that, there's some cool tone happening. One of the useful features in Photoshop is that we can use our eyedropper here, and we can come into the scene, and pulling up the info panel, it gives us some red, green, and blue information, which is nice. We have the ability to change this information if we come to the little eyedropper icon in the info panel. And you can see we have a number of different ways we can look at this information. But we're in the RGB color space, we're going to look at it in RGB. The default is RGB and it also gives you the CMYK values off to the right, which are percentages of ink at that point. But what I'm looking to do is bring this color sampler in here and get it right on this guy's forehead. And when I hold the shift key, it turns into the color sampler tool and it allows me to click and drop a little point right there. And what's nice about this is I can look here in my inf info panel and it tells me some information. The red value is 144, the green value is 111, and the blue value is 115. So the blue value is higher than the green value. Typically in skin tones, we're looking for the red value to be the highest, green value to be below that in the numbers, and the blue to be below that. So you can see here the blue is higher than the green by a little bit, which makes sense as we look at the image, it looks a little blue. And what's great is the minute I open up the curve dialog to correct for this color, it's going to put some forward slashes here next to these numbers. So it'll give me a before, here's what your values were before, and then after, here's, here are the values after you've made your curve changes. So I click on little curve dialog here, adjustment layer, and I'm just going to go ahead and pull my panels out here. I'll give myself a little bit more working room. There we go. So let's see. 
first thing I want to do is I want to add a little snap to this image. So I'm going to brighten it up a bit. I'm just going to come here to my highlight region, brighten it up a, a touch. I'm going to come here to the, my shadow area, darken it down. I, I want to make sure that I don't darken it down too much because I don't want to lose detail in his suit. You know, if I take it too dark, it gets a little too contrasty. So, you know, this image, I don't need to punch the contrast too much. I'm going to come here, per usual, to my blue channel. That seems to be the offending one here. And I'm going to grab my scrubby finger and I'm going to bring it into that same area. And I'm going to go ahead and click right on that little sampler. And the sampler is invisible. Uh, it's only seen here on screen. If I were to print this out, it wouldn't be seen. And I'm going to use my arrow keys and start dialing it down. And you can see as I do that, the number in that right-hand column drops as I add yellow. So I'll show you here is before and then after, adding some yellow, removing some blue. Never a bad idea when I'm working with color like this, skin tones, to come in and drop a point in the red and just give it a touch of red. I don't want them to look too sunburned, so I don't want to take that too far. And there's nothing wrong with it as you're assessing the file. Like I look at this and I say, eh, maybe I pushed my contrast a little too far. I'm going to bring, I'm down here already selected on this little anchor point down here. Doop, grab it and I'm going to bring it back up just so that it's not too contrasty. So utilizing the info palette, now we can see I've got 163 in my red, 124 in my green, 120 lower than that in the blue channel. And visually, it looks better. There, there's before, a little dark, a little flat, a little blue. That looks a little healthier skin tone, a little brighter, a little happier, a little more tropical. So those are a number of different ways you can work when color correcting with skin tone. Stay tuned to a future episode here where we're going to be talking about the LAB color space that you may have seen if you've ever gone to image mode. Uh, you'll see that there. There will be a, a whole video where I'll be discussing some ways we can use that in color correction. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. If you'd like to make a comment, make a comment down below. We'll get back to you. If you'd like more of this content, feel free to subscribe up there or down there. You can hit the little bell and it'll let you know when new videos have appeared. And finally, thank you to Canon for providing the excellent video camera that we're using to get this great content out to you. Thank you.